This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are on a 10,000 year odyssey. So tell me, Muse, of that plant of many resources, which wander far and far wide, the ancient plant of food, fuel, and fiber cultivated for millennia. As we venture through the past 10,000 years, we will explore and discover the plant which cannabis derives, the many uses of the plant, hemp, cannabis, ashes, cannabis and religion, cannabis and medicine, cannabis and Uncle Sam. <laughs> and so our odyssey begins. Today, our odyssey is not long ago and far away. It is current and in progress. It is Paul Klink. He is the founder, patient advocate, chaplain, medical assistant. How about all that? And he just wandered off to be with the patient and the, the people of Houston, that horrible, horrible storm. So he brings all of that passion or compassion to those people so far in need. Paul is the founder of Honolulu Wellness Center Cannabis, and he was patient as well as an advocate. So he understands and feels what the patients need and want. And above all, he's learned to listen, to be with the patient. So there we are. <laughs> so welcome, 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 Paul. I am so glad that you're back, all in one piece. And so before we talk about cannabis or anything else, Tell me about, because we did talk to you on the phone from Houston. So tell me, and that's just beyond my imagination, what being in Houston was like. I've been a volunteer for the American Red Cross here in Hawaii uh, since 2012. And I've been blessed to have been deployed to a few different natural disasters uh, to help our fellow Americans in California during the Oroville Dam evacuation. They evacuated 200,000 people, and there was quite a bit of flooding, even though the dam didn't break. Um, we came up with a concept, or Red Cross came up with a concept of a mega shelter. So instead of, say, having 1,000 shelters with 100 people, have one shelter with 100,000 people or something like that. So being able to centralize all the care in one spot. Um, I'm trained as a disaster action team member, so I go to a lot of house fires here on Oahu, but I'm also trained as a shelter manager, so they deploy me to different parts. I also managed a shelter in Pahoa during Hurricane Izell as it hit the Big Island. Mm -hmm. um, nothing prepared me for what would happen in Houston. Um, I had never been in a situation where I could really have more empathy than sympathy. I could totally see myself in these people's situations. Many people were in areas that were not under evacuation, that were not um, thinking they would ever be affected by the storm, but due to levee, and damming and things like that, their homes were flooded at middle of the night where if water would flow in their bedrooms after smashing in their bedroom windows, they'd have to gather their fa family wearing what little they were wearing at 90 degrees in the middle of the night, swim out of their own home and try to get to a rooftop and wait evacuation by helicopter, um, having only what little if any clothes they had on their back um, and then end up in a shelter. So just listening to them, I was night shelter manager so I do that and I also help take care of the facilities and just listening, being a place for them to cry, put their head on your shoulder. And even though I did go through a lot with Hurricane Iniki, I can listen better. A lot of people misunderstand and think they need to compete with the client and tell them what they went through that they understood it. I think the clients just sense that you've been through it when they see you listening that intently and giving the nods at the right time mm -hmm. and, and truly interactive listening. And so doing that and playing a lot of Hawaiian music. Well, that helps. Handing out some Live Aloha stickers and cards and just being there for them. And 
letting them get it off their chests and get them under a, into a process I like calling the new normal because um, their old normal is never going to be around again. It's gone forever. Their house is maybe miles downstream from where they last saw it. So they lost all their material worldly goods. But they realized then they got themselves, they had their health, they had their family, and they have thousands of Red Cross volunteers who are giving up their time, their vacation time, expenses, um, whatever it takes to help their fellow man with love with people we've never met and didn't know who they were without anything spun to it at all other than humanity. So Red Cross volunteers really are a beautiful example of humanitarianism in fellow Americans. I do deploy other places in the world under other organizations, and nowhere do you see people coming together like the United States. Nowhere. In Texas, we have people from all over the United States, and tons of people up from Mexico, all selflessly helping for free. And I am just, well, I was impressed, period, with that whole process. And we just talked on the phone to someone in Charleston. Yeah. And no one talks about those islands. Right. Um, but he did say that, unlike the cities, where those islands the water comes in and then goes out. There's nothing that, no walls, no buildings that stop. Right. So they do get hit, but then it recedes. Right. But that's a different, there's a different. Yeah, in Houston, it's all the cement and it doesn't it's absorb the moisture yeah. or water. So, and the bayou system is really interesting. The flooding continued on for days and days and days because the way the water comes through the bayous is slower than a straight stream or river. So days where normally we would be receding waters, lowering, lowering, uh, flooding, it was still going up. And it remained dangerous in ways no one imagined. Alligators came into areas they never were before. Um, these islands of billions of these red biting ants, fire ants, would be floating around. You could see them. It's a wonder of nature. But if you got near them, you got anywhere you had exposed skin, you were in trouble. Uh, snakes, venomous snakes, they had never been in those areas, were all being displaced by the flooding. And the live wires, you'd be walking in the waters and feel a vibration. You know there's electrical wire nearby. You had to get out right away. It's deadly. Um, so having risks and situations that we're not really familiar with, just trying to get to the people and get them out of harm's way and get them some clothing, um, food and shelter, and getting them on their path to recovery so that they understand there's a system, there's people who've been through this before, and it's going to be okay. It's just going to be a new normal. Yeah, new normal. That's yeah. that's a new phrase, new that's normal. That's what I call it, because that's really what it is. They're going to learn how to survive, and they're going to have a great story later and inspire a lot of people. And we end up making a lot of future volunteers for Red Cross. They see the value of what we do and see the gratification we get just by listening, mm -hmm. just by helping, just by being there. And we end up recruiting a lot of future volunteers from people we service. And you bring that same empathy to your wellness cannabis clinic. Exactly. How long have you been doing cannabis clinic? How, how long? It's interesting. I actually, the, the, the grandfather of the cannabis movement in Hawaii, coincidentally, I just saw Scott Foster, and he, we stand on his shoulders and shoulders of his associates who were working back in the 70s and 80s, 90s, so that in 2000 we got that law passed so we could use it medically and legally here in Hawaii. Um, I became a patient right away because of my cardiologic, cardiological and pulmonary, many physical issues I've had. And I don't like using synthetic narcotic drugs, if at all possible, and I found that all natural cannabis is a much better alternative. And then I opened my company last year, in 2016, because my normal doctor was on vacation and my card expired. And it always seemed like people were doing it on the down low, like, oh, I got medical marijuana card. It's completely legal. It can be completely transparent and completely appropriate. So I associate with doctors that are qualifying patients, and I take care of all the front end. I s find the clients, the patients. I educate the patients with the information I've been taught through schooling. I get them prepared. Then they meet with a doctor to verify and set up a face-to-face -face ongoing doctor-patient relationship with our medical cannabis doctors. Um, we work out of the Infinity Life Center, Infinity Life Center over at uh, Restaurant Row. We're in the building four, suite 470, we just moved in. Um, Dr. Michael Pasquale is our certifying doctor, and he really cares as well. We, we're there to listen and help. So let's talk about the the plant itself. Yes. Because this is a tent. See, I'm a newbie. Huh. Okay. So that's why we're on this odyssey. So my understanding is that we've had this hemp since God created the planet. Yes. Or, or the divine, whatever you want to yes, call it. Yes, whatever. So tell us about the plant itself. 
The plant itself is, is fascinating. And first of all, people think weed is a weed. It just grows like a weed. But to make it into medicine, there's a process. It's not that easy. It's not like you throw some seeds in the ground, you pl you, you pick it and, and smoke it. There's, okay. First of all, we never recommend our patients smoke it. Uh, for ourselves, we choose not to do that. Um, I work with doctors who don't prescribe narcotics, so they're very much into natural yeah. solutions. Um, and again, they're, they're DOs. Both doctors I work with right now are uh, DOs, which MDs to me are more about um, dealing with symptoms and DOs are more about dealing with solutions in well, my experience. And the underlying there is that medical schools are financed by the big pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies. Yeah, so they're so, discouraged from educating. So they, you know, they're not going to know anything well, about Well, the pharmaceutical that. companies are learning about cannabis quickly. Oh, they have and some patents. They have some patents, and they have business models that are accommodating to the ad advent of it le re being re-legalized. Re um, yeah. You know, and the important thing to me is I'm moving forward. Cause looking back on it, it's, it's, it's shameful what's happened. It's really a crime against humanity, the way the cannabis, a non-synthetic solution for so many um, ailments. Not, I always start public speaking about cannabis with the same quote. I always start off like this. It's not as good as the proponents want you to believe it is. It's not as bad as the detractors want you to believe it is. But what it's good for, it's really good, good for. Yeah. Uh, so we have a plant, this, this plant here. Cannabis. And it is a hemp plant. And on that plant, out of that plant, you get hemp, you get cannabis, you get hashes. All that's why I say it's a divine gift because you can you can build a house with it, you can have medicine, you can have fabrics, you have a non tree paper. Yes. You've got all of these wonderful things out of this one plant. Yes. And we've had it for ten thousand years or more. Or more. So how did we get from medical because ancient Chinese used it as medicine, sure. and ancient Indians, Ayurvedic medicines. Yes. Um, all of these medicines come before they became pharmaceuticals. Yes. How did we get from there to it being illegal, it, it being uh, trashed, all of these yeah. things that have happened? scaring people to death about it. Yeah. How did we get there? You know, I'm, I try not to be too much of a conspiracy theorist. I'm really, <laughs> no. good with, I'm really good with reality and truth. And the reality and truth of this is it's all financial. I mean, it's, I, from day one, if you look at whenever there was a detractor to cannabis, you could trace it back to an investment or situation where they're benefiting financially by pushing cannabis down. Um, whether it was the opiate industry, um, whether it was the funding of the concept of the MDs to begin with in the first colleges and the existing colleges, and the funding by pharmaceutical companies, uh, the money that surrounds the FDA and, and, and what needs to go through or not, and who needs to be paid or not, and what needs to be done or not to get a quote unquote drug uh, FDA certified. Um, a lot's been done against humanity in the name of profit here. And rather than going back and, and pointing out who did what, and I'm, I'm much, for me it's much more useful to move forward and say, okay, we're getting it legalized in parts of the United States. Well, to me, the United States is a democracy. So 50% or more would win, and we have more than 50% of the states with laws that allow cannabis consumption for medicine. Do I think it should be loosey-goosey, recreationally available? Absolutely not, okay. especially when today's, today's uh, strains and trade, today's concentrates are so powerful. If, if, if it could just be handled similar to alcohol, um, as far as legal use is concerned, or a medicine, which to me with rules and such and competing with opiates is not going to be easy, it's much more effective okay. to be handled like alcohol, I think. Let's take a break yes. and come back and we'll talk about that very thing the problems and the uses and what have you. So we'll be right back. Thank you. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. I could play, so any chance to play at all, you know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah, I saw it. 
Ted Rawson here, folks, your host on Where the Drone Leads, our weekly show at noon on Thursdays here on Think Tech, where we talk about drones, anything you to do about drones, drones, remotely piloted aircraft, unmanned air systems, whatever you want to call them, emerging into Hawaii's economy, educational framework, and our public life. We talk about things associated with the use, the misuse, uh, technology, engineering, legislation, with the local experts as well as people from across the country. Please join us noon on Thursdays and catch the latest on what's taking place in the world of drones that might affect you. So we're back. And we are here with my new best friend, <laughs> Dr. Paul Klink, who is well, his resume is that long, and that would take up the rest of the program, so we'll, we'll deal with that later with you. And we are talking about the subject of cannabis. Yes. Medical cannabis. I don't want to talk about all those other things, except that we do need to talk about the fact that alcohol, which kills you, yes. is legal. Yeah. Tobacco, smoking, is legal. That will ruin your lungs. Yes. Yet, here we have a natural product that's been with us for thousands of years. Even the Bible talks about Jesus anointing with the oil. That is not legal in parts of the United States. I'm, I, I guess I know when Uncle Sam decides, just like they did at one point with alcohol, which didn't work then, mm -hmm. this doesn't work now. Right. The, the fact that they criminalized it with, what is this, a number one? Schedule one, schedule same one. as heroin. As, as it's scheduled in such a way that it has, to be on that schedule, it has to have no medical value, which is ludicrous. The federal government has patents for medical value cannabis. Yes. Um, real quick, I'm a doctor of divinity, so I'm the company's chaplain, and I'm also a certified life coach, so I work a lot with the patients about their use of the cannabis and some of the anxieties they have because it has been uh, demonized over the years, trying to show them that it is now legal to use in Hawaii with their qualifying ailments. We just make sure they actually have one of the qualifying ailments. And the list is always growing. We're just in a meeting this morning to add lupus and uh, general anxiety disorder. Well, into the list. General anxiety, would that PTSD? Um, PTSD may be as part of a general anxiety disorder diagnosis, but that would have to be diagnosed by a psychiatrist and documentation would be brought to us so we can give them the card similar to, um, um, I mean, the PTSD is a, a standing diagnosis now. So if someone comes in with a diagnosis for that, we were able to add that on um, to the state of Hawaii's list as with a couple other diagnoses. So the list is always growing. I'm looking to oh, get good. autism on there. It's an amazing medication for autism. Um, but I'm there to, to, to listen to the patient. Um, to make sure they're well educated. We give workshops at once every two or three months about how to grow it, how to cook with it, how to use it other ways than smoking it. It's never been known to cause cancer. In the history of recorded um, medical journaling, it's never, ever had someone overdose on marijuana. And there's a technical, biological reason for that in the way the brain handles the THC that's activated. Um, there's a lot of medicines in cannabis. There's said to say 116 to 132 specific quantifiable medicines or terpenes um, uh, in the endocannabinoid profiles of the cannabis plant. And there's different varieties. So someone who maybe had a bad experience with one kind, when I speak to them about different varieties, there's tens of thousands of varieties and each one's been documented very well for the specific uses and side effects they may have, dry eyes, dry mouth, how to mitigate those. Other alternatives than cannabis, there's kratom, there's other kratom, there's other herbs that are non-synthetic that can help with pain, anxiety, stress. Because the top three reasons people really use cannabis for, they'll come in for the, the reasons that are on the list and they will qualify if they do with objective medical information. It's really stress, anxiety, and insomnia. No matter what anybody says, that's generally that's the reason the big, people use it. Big and it works really, really well for that. And Hawaii may be the first state in the United States to add anxiety to our list. I would and we've think been a so. pioneer since day one. I, I would think so. Simply because when we look at, well, since Vietnam War, PTSD is big. Yeah. I mean, they, they've never had a definition for it before, but now yeah. they do. Now they do, and the stories we hear from our patients, we don't solicit our patients. They come in with a right. diagnosis from a, their doctor. We're there to validate that, which is a quick conversation, and have an ongoing relationship. Like when someone comes into our clinic, our initial price, which is one of the lowest in Hawaii, includes two additional appointments during the year. It's not a wham-bam, here's your signature, go away. It's 
you're now our cannabis patient. We're here to educate you, keep you up to date with the laws, make sure you're compliant with all the laws yourself and how you're handling your medicine, other alternatives they may need or want, as well as educating them that we're there for them to hear their situation and help them. Well, you said now that you don't necessarily smoke I think smoking marijuana, putting ash and heat in your lungs just doesn't make a lot of sense. Using vaporizing pens or vaporizing systems which are uh, pre-combustion uh, makes a cooler inhalation. If you want to inhale it, if it's made from VG or vegetable glycerin or certain elements, your lungs will digest it like a, like it won't cause any future problems with your lungs, generally speaking. But I also recommend tinctures, um, which are made with tincture, is that? It's under the tongue. tongue. It could be a sublingual tincture or something you add the food. I highly recommend cooking with it. I mean, you can put a certain amount in some butter, make it with the butter, because the heat, the carboxylation, the heating of the cannabis activates the psychotropic or the part that gives you the quote unquote high. But in most cases, to get the medicinal value, your endocannabinoid system needs the THC delta to open your endocannabinoid system to get the other medicines. You've heard about CBD oils and all these what's other the, things. Okay, what's the difference in the C CBD oil or and the cannabis oils. Okay. What's, what's Usually when people say CBD. C CBD is legal in all 50 states. That's a gray area still, but I would say that the CBD is something that's separate, separating out the THC or the psychoactive part of the plant. It'll, I think to be legally CBD, it's got to be 0 .003, a very small amount of THC because it's hard to take all of it out. Yeah. Um, but in my experience, you need some THC to actually activate your system to accept a lot of the CBD's values that a lot of our patients are looking for. But CBD by itself has been shown um, very clinically in certain conditions where qualifying ailments to be useful. The, when someone says hemp oil or cannabis oil, as you called it, that usually refers to full plant or full spectrum. So that will include the THC delta, THCA. I mean, there's, there's like I said, over 100 of these acronyms and medicines in the plant, um, which, and again, I'm always traveling to education. I'm always trying to learn. A lot of the best education about cannabis is coming out of Israel, the Netherlands. It's not out of the United States well, yet because I of laws. Did, someone did send me this, a file yeah. from the university in Israel, oh, good. but they've got thousands of years of documentation. Yes, yes peer-reviewed. Yes. Absolutely. Very factual. And, incredible. Now, uh, also, uh, person showed me because you know I'm we make salves as well that this hemp cream yeah as long as it has a solvent it's DMSO yeah it goes that was your wonderful yeah. for tattoos yeah. he says that it protects the skin helps to heal helps heal helps with the pain and, and what not with a tattoo I don't, I've never had a tattoo well, people any, any topical issues with cannabis it has a lot of anesthetic and um, it has a lot of value, and I always recommend people, instead of talking to someone, go and research from credible sources, um, a lot of which are out of Israel, coincidentally. Yes. Um, the important thing is if you're going to use a salve or a lotion, if it doesn't have a solvent in it, a DMSO, kind of like the old horse medicine, they give it to them, it goes through their skin, transdermal, it's not going to get into your system, so to speak. So a lot of the salves that we make, or help patients make, and I've made for myself in the past, um, we'll use DMSO, we get them at down to earth or any health food store, I usually do 70-30, 70% DMSO, 30% aloe vera, because it can be harsh on your skin, and then I use that and then add the tincture to that, and then it makes the tincture, it's a transport of the tincture to get into, you get the topical value you spoke of with the yes. tattoo, but also goes systemic once it goes through the skin, then you get the benefits inside your entire it, system. It seems to me that these high-end tattoo parlors, and they're not cheap, no. that that's something that they would... Oh, I'm sure. Well, the CBD oil for now, but as soon as it becomes recreational available, um, they would be able to use it in other ways as long as some patients over 21 years old. No, I'm saying, but for those that are giving these tattoos, it seems to me that that would be a part of the process. Yeah, it would be a natural. Yeah, Absolutely. It would. I'd but for older people and, and younger people with off, we just got rheumatoid arthritis and other forms of arthritis that cause pains added to the list. And I've had enough broken bones where I can tell you if you put the CBD oil by itself, ideally full spectrum, it really works. I mean, you can do this where normally you really wouldn't be able to do that. And it really, for seniors especially, cannabis is just a silver bullet for a lot of ailments that just humans have as a condition of being human as you get older. Well, now Clarity too, because now we're recommending it for dementia, Alzheimer's, um, a lot of these psychotropic um, values go in to help patients in other areas as well. So that it would clear up the fog or whatever's 
getting in the way. Yes, there's a whole time. set of yeah. cannabis that are specifically built. They call them the college exam cannabis set. The reason why a lot of college students, they're called focused strains. Uh -huh. So these strains really help you focus mentally. They increase your math scores. The Netherlands has done studies on that. It increases IQ scores. Um, a lot of it, I think, is relaxing you to the, allow yourself to think clear, more clearly and less distracted. Well, what about for Alzheimer's and dementia where you to pull up whatever's Recollection. Uh, I can tell you that I had a severe stroke in September 2015. The only two medications I used regarding the stroke was mother's milk from my much better half because she had frozen a bunch for our daughter and someone who said that just think the mother's human mother's milk creates a body a it baby does. from birth to two years old perfectly creates brains and cannabis and I'm talking to you right now I'm using my right hand and my right leg that weren't working um, to me it was a severe stroke it was a thalamitic stroke so a lot of asphasia, which means I wasn't recalling words. I wasn't able to speak without stuttering. And it was very upsetting. Um, and I did some research and found out the strains that would help with that, which were high CBD, low THC, similar to the lotions people will get for tennis elbow or tennis arm, and uh, some other varieties that were known to be good for a clarity of mind and thought. And somehow my neural network got me to the point where I'm talking to you today, which is emotional to me, because I couldn't talk after my stroke very well. Now I had canes, and it was horrible. And yeah. Stroke it is pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> so there, there is a part of the body, and I don't know what it is, that accepts this. Your endocannabinoid system. So you have this Every human. system. Every human. So it welcomes. Naturally. Naturally. It's, it's a natural process for you. And body. so they work together to fix whatever's wrong. Well, for what it's good for, yeah, definitely. For, uh, for glaucoma, it releases the pressure in the back of the eye. For cancer, um, and of course, the precipitative symptoms from your chemotherapy, it really helps with nausea. Any kind of nausea, but definitely with chemotherapy, derived nausea. Cachexia, or wasting syndrome, you can't eat, or what you can't eat won't be digested well, and nutrition won't come in. Cannabis is world famous for, use, uh, for, for those symptoms. Um, and they're finding very clear, objective, peer-reviewed results in regards to cannabis and cancer. Um, it, from my experience, it makes can your body a very unfriendly place for cancer, and oh, I've yeah. seen some miracles, but I'm waiting for peer-reviewed results to come out to share them. I read a piece just oh, a week or two ago about a study and diabetes. Oh, yeah. So I have a friend, we've been family for 40 years, Everybody in that family has diabetes. But one of them who has been on recreational uh, cannabis for as long as I've known them, he out of the whole family is the only one that has handled the diabetes well. Yep. He functions well. He doesn't have dialysis. He doesn't have this. And I've watched that family deteriorate with yep. this. And he's... And it never occurred to me until I read the study. And I thought, ah, oh, that's why he has survived. Yeah. Absolutely, and it's, it's a medicine that really works for what it works for, and we're finding diabetes is one of those things that cannabis can be very, very useful, and it's helping people survive. I've seen with my own eyes the healing effects of an autistic child calling his dad, dad, at 23 years old for the first time. I've seen people put salve on the bottom of their feet with severe diabetic neuropathy and be able to walk again. I've seen people with diabetes that have been able to reverse some of the actions. I'm leery to get specific because it, until we have peer-reviewed studies, the powers that be aren't gonna feel the, the truth of it all yet. But it's clear to people anecdotally, obviously. Well, there's so much because we have 10,000 years to catch up with. Yeah. So you will come back? I'd be honored to help you anytime, Marsha. Anything uh, for you. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. This is a great start on our 10,000-year journey. <laughs> and so, again, thank you so much. Well, thanks and, for inviting me. I'm honored. And thank you for volunteering to go to Houston. I love being one of the volunteers. It's selfish. We get to see some miracles, yeah. and it's beautiful thank under you. the circumstances. Aloha. Thank you.